Hi guys, welcome back to Jack's Tech Corner and another episode of The Photography Guy. Hey, I've been getting a lot of questions here and recently you've seen if you've been following the Facebook group, Jack's Tech Corner, you will know that I've been getting a lot of uh, time putting up products on eBay. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about Jack, how do I take a product picture to get it on eBay? It seems like your products always sell. Well, it's not really that difficult. It just takes a little bit of ingenuity. Now, here's some key components. First, don't take a picture just on a cluttered desktop. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff on your desk and you snap a picture and you're gonna put that on eBay as a product. That's not going to sell too well. And the reason is, is you have too much clutter around the product that you're selling. So this is even good if you're just selling products on eBay. Say if you're selling tennis shoes, uh, jewelry, anything, you're going to want professional looking product pictures to sell. And don't use the stock pictures on eBay because that doesn't sell you anything. I refuse to buy from people that use a stock photo off of eBay. They put it up there and uh, you know it says stock photo. Well, I don't know what their product looks like. Wonder if it's all scratched up, banged up, broken. No, you don't want to buy that product. You want the actual product picture. So what I'm going to show you here is a very, very simple way of setting this up. So I'm going to be work, working back and forth here with the camera. But first, we're going to take some shots here um, with just regular light in a room. Okay, but first I'm going to show you how to set up a product area to shoot at. Then I'm going to introduce some flash photography into this in case you're a little bit more involved. If you are selling products on eBay, buy some, buy a little bit extra gear for your photography gear and use that to, uh, you know, take the pictures and make them more professional looking and you'll sell more products. I guarantee it. All right, so let's go ahead first of all and start by looking at my little product stand that I set up. It doesn't have to be elaborate and I'll tell you about uh, the cost of it as we're going through this. So let me just stop this for a second and I'm gonna reverse myself in a camera mode here and we'll get a close up view of uh, the, the shooting area. Okay, so the product area that we're shooting here is very easy to set up. Now I do have a backdrop stand just because I happen to own one. Uh, if it looks like it's a little uh, tilted, because it probably is. And the reason that is, is we want the foam core board. That's what this is sitting on, just straight foam core board. Let me tear this apart for a second so I can show you how I put this together. This is just foam core board. We've used this in the past for shots uh, when we did different photography. Um, no price tag on here, but I think it was, it was a couple dollars, maybe a buck and a half at a uh, arts and crafts store. So it's just white foam core board. Make sure it's free from all debris. You don't want any hair on it. You don't want any uh, anything laying on top of this thing. You don't want any dirt for sure. I have my stool here. Okay, so I just use my photography stool. You can use anything, a flat table, a chair. You can even put this phone core board up against the wall. The biggest thing is when you put these together, make sure that the top phone core board is lying on the bottom phone core board. Okay. The reason that is, is you don't want this big gaping hole there when you take your photos. You can see through there. Also, when we start using flash, this is going to be a nice reflective surface to, re to bounce that flash off of. So it's very, very easy. Next, when you take your product, if it's an old product, uh, if it's an antique product, you know, dust it off a little bit, clean it. Nobody wants to see dirt on a product that you're going to put on eBay. It's not going to sell too well. Put your product, I like to make sure it's on my chair to make sure it's good and sturdy. Okay, so the product is on uh, the, the, the product area. Don't put it all the way to the back. You wanna put it in the center and there'll be reasons for that as we're taking our flash photography, but just to give it some more reflectiveness around it, of course. But first I'm gonna show you without flash because I know a lot of you don't have flash cameras. So I'm gonna take a couple shots without flash and then we'll introduce the flash and we'll see what the difference is, if there's any at all, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so as I said, our first product shooting here is going to be nothing more than having the camera. We are going to use, now you can use any camera, you know, uh, as long as you have the uh, ability, if you want to use flash, but we're gonna be using my handy dandy uh, Sony A6000 uh, digital SLR, mirrorless SLR. And we're gonna be taking these shots today with this camera. So what you wanna do here, first of all, is know your environment. I already know using this uh, overhead light that the lighting is going to be a little bit off. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Not everybody's going to be able to do this, but we're going to try it anyway. I have 
here, I have here a handy dandy light meter. I've showed this in the past. Now I'm going to use a light meter. You probably will not have one of these at your disposal. What we're going to do is go to mode. I'm just going to go to ambient light. Click a reading. Let's see it says ISO 400 is 1.6. So I know we need to change that a little bit here. So we're going to take our ISO setting up uh, with no flash to, uh, we're going to see if, 1250 would work. So let's change my ISO setting on my light meter to 1250. Again, you probably don't have a light meter. If it's something you want to buy later on, it makes life a lot easier. 2.8, that's still not going to work. Let's change our ISO up some more. And we'll go up to uh, 2500. Change the light meter to 2500. Again, because I'm just using the overhead light. Okay, that's all I have available to me. And try this again. All right. So it's showing me a shutter speed. Let's change my shutter speed now to 80. I am shooting manual mode with a light meter. And we're going to change our f-stop down to 4.0. All right. So I have the camera set and ready to go. Now I can take my, my product shot here. All right. So let's go ahead and take a product shot. So I'm just going to get down here in front of the camera. I'll look at my product. All right, so at that point, we'll go ahead and as always, I'll show you that picture right now. All right, now we're gonna take one more picture here and this time I'm gonna let the camera decide what it wants to do. Um, so do something we don't normally do. We are going to go to full automatic mode. All right, so we're just gonna do automatic mode and this may be how you're shooting. It's just full automatic mode. And now let's go ahead and look at that shot to see the difference between metering and the, the camera doing everything for us. That's fully automatic mode. And I'm going to put the camera back into manual mode. And we're going to turn it off for a minute. Uh, you know what? I do like to readjust my shutter speed. I mean my ISO. Uh, because I know we're going to be using uh, flash base next. And indoors with flash with this camera, I've learned it. ISO 400 is pretty good. All right. So now let me go ahead and readjust this camera a little bit. And we'll talk about the flash unit that we're going to be using. All right. Again, now you don't need all this equipment, obviously, because I showed you those first two shots we used with absolutely no flash. I would recommend spending the 4 or $5 and get the foam core board, put that on a flat tabletop, put the back of the foam cord behind it, put your product on it, get decent room lighting, and take your shots. So that's a great way to start your eBay product shooting. But we want to go a little bit further. I don't want to make this video too long, and I'm not trying to show you too much out of a, a, a certain price range that you may be wanting to hit. So what we're going to look at next here is my umbrella stand. All right. The very, very cheap umbrella. Very, very inexpensive. So I'm going to pull this up to the camera here, show you the setup. You know, maybe we'll pull the umbrella out here so we can get this a little closer here, just so we can see what's going on. All right. So the umbrella itself is set up to be a reflective. So the flash is going to shoot into the umbrella and bring a soft lighting out of this umbrella itself. I do have a wireless flash trigger set up on here. I do recommend those. You don't have to spend a lot of money for these flash triggers. These are my impact triggers. I've been using them for years and absolutely love them. I also found out that they do work. Uh, I originally purchased these for my Nikon gear, but they do work on the Sony A6000. So I'd imagine they work on the Sony, I think it's the 7A now. Is that the correct? I think uh, the full frame Sony. But anyway, the impact triggers do work on either or of the camera, so it's very, very handy to have those. You can buy eBay triggers over for you know, as low as $15, and they're going to do you just fine because we're very close range here for product shooting. The next thing is on top here is my flash, and I have that flash set at, uh, let's see what we have it set at. We have it set at right now at one quarter power. All right, one quarter power is what we have the flash set at. 
you don't need your flash set at one, you know, full power, uh, blasting into this thing and blasting light over your uh, object. We're lighting a very little object, right? So why would we want to blast that with light? You don't really need to do that. What you do need to do is get just enough little bursts of light on there to uh, enhance the product and make the product more appealing to the buyer. All this is for the buyer. Uh, think of all those advertising commercials you've seen uh, during the Super Bowls on TV on a daily basis and look at the overall product. It's always well lit because if they don't have a well lit product, they're not going to sell you anything. So we have an impact trigger. I do have a, a, a flash on top of here. You can get a young Nuo flash. I totally recommend them. They work amazing uh, for this kind of work. Then I have on here is a flash bracket. That's what this piece is right here, flash bracket. These flash brackets can be purchased on eBay for as low as five, five to ten dollars. You can get a very nice flash bracket. The stand itself, the light stand here, is uh, probably uh, the light stand, if you can see it, there's the light stand. The light stands you can get on eBay also for five or ten bucks. It doesn't have to be anything heavy duty, folks. You're not shooting portraits with it. If you do, buy a little bit heavier duty stand. The reason that is, is you don't want this thing falling over on somebody's head when you're taking pictures. Not that this would, it's a pretty decent stand. The umbrella itself, I purchased um, on eBay. You can get these umbrellas brand new uh, for as little as, again, five, ten dollars. So for, for 30 bucks, you can have this unit for, right here with the trigger for about 30 bucks. The flash now, add that. A uh, young new flash are going to set you back about another 50 or 60 dollars. So be that what it may. But then you would have what you need to do product shooting. Make sure, this is a little word of advice, make sure your camera does uh, have a hot shoe on it that will accept flash triggers. So if you're using, um, a lot of people don't understand it, there has to be a hot shoe for that trigger to sit on to fire this flash. So make sure you have that. Now that that's all done, we're going to set this up and we're going to put it uh, right next to our product, right back next to our gnome that we've been using. Everybody knows I'm pretty world famous for the gnome. I've been using him <laughs> For, for photography shots for a long time. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back. We're gonna adjust this stand down. We don't want it real high, okay? We don't want it that high. That's just, you want it closer to the product. So you can get just that burst of light without filling the room full of light. So we're gonna drop this down. I like to have it almost, almost, I like to have the umbrella just about maybe an inch and a half above my, my foam core board. So the base of the umbrella, where the umbrella sticks through the stand, is about an inch and a half from the foam core board. We're gonna turn these triggers on here. We'll turn the trigger on. We'll turn the flash on. And now what I'm gonna do here is, because I have it, I'm gonna take my light meter. I'm gonna set my light meter back to flash mode, single flash mode. I'm going to change my ISO. I told you on my camera, I took it down to 400. That's kind of what I've been shooting at. So now I'm ready to take a test fire here with my light meter. Okay, so I'm going to take the light meter and I'm going to take a test fire. So before I do that though, I'm going to drop the camera back down again, back to the product so we can see this happening. All right, now I'm ready to show you how we're going to get a, a test reading on here. This is the receipt, this is the transmitter, I'm sorry, that goes on top of the camera. You can see where it has the hot shima on the bottom of it, okay? This is the transmitter of the wireless trigger. I do have a handy dandy light meter, so I am going to utilize it. If you don't, that's okay, because you can take a few test shots, zero your camera into the right lighting, and you'll be fine. But to save me time, I set this at ISO 400, and the shutter speed is set at 100. What we're going to do now is I'm going to click the side button on this thing to get a test reading. I click it, and it tells me now at an ISO of, of 400, my shutter speed should be 100, and my f-stop should be 9.0. I'll show it to you. There you go. Very, very simple. Okay, That's where a light meter comes in very handy to do product shots. Let's put my flash trigger on top of my Sony camera. Here's the Sony A, uh, you can see it there, Sony A6000. We're going to take the, uh, the, the trigger, put it right on top of the camera. Just give it a little, uh, couple turns there, and we're going to turn it on. Now we're going to turn the camera on. All right, let's set, we set our ISO already. I'm going to double check it, make sure it is, yep, 400. We're going to set our um, 
f-stop to 9.0. Let's do that. Shutter uh, f-stop of 9.0. And we're going to set our shutter speed to 100. Perfect. Now our camera is set up and ready to use the flash. Make sure the flash trigger is on. It is on and ready to go. And now we're going to go ahead and take a shot using the flash on our actual product. And now there's the first one. And now I'm going to take one more just to be sure. And here's the second shot. Now I'm going to shut my camera back off, shut my flash trigger off on top. Remember when you're done shooting, walk over to your umbrella, shut your flash trigger off, and then shut your flash off. All right. Okay, folks, so I really hope that this helped you uh, in your product shooting for eBay. The one thing I noticed, I told my wife, when you sell something on eBay, and I don't know why I missed this, remember they take 1% of the sale. So if you sell something for a $1,000, they're taking $100 is their fee to sell that product for you. You know, you're getting a worldwide reach though. So you may not be able to sell your product anymore in a local newspaper. Who in your local town might be looking for a certain product? I don't know. And if you are selling on eBay, and you're, you're merchandising, you now have a worldwide audience. So. Is it worth the fees? I guess in the end, because there's no other way to reach people. Uh, nobody's competing against eBay. But you know, this is a way to do product shots for any site out there. Uh, even if you're using Craigslist. Uh, if you're using Craigslist in your local area and you're doing product shots. I did a product shot. I had to go out and do a whole product shot of a 57 Chevy. I spent hours doing these product shots for this gentleman uh, to get these pictures up on Craigslist. So. Product shots are a big, big deal. I mean, but the better they are, the better lit, the better cleaned up they are, as you've seen in our samples that we shot today, the more products that you're going to sell on eBay and you're going to, you know, get returns there that way. So hopefully it helped you. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, please don't forget to join our Facebook group at Jack's Tech Corner where you get tons of more information. If you're just learning Photoshop elements or if you are a seasoned expert at Photoshop elements, Go to jtclearning.com, that's jtclearning.com, and sign up for one of my online elements courses. Right now you can take 12, 13, or 14, and they're very, very inexpensive. So check those out online. Once you sign up, you're a member forever. So if you ever forget how to do something, you get right back and watch the video again. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, and I'll see you back here next time on The Photography Guy with Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now, folks.